The death of Julius Caesar. Suetonius reports. Caesar's approaching murder was foretold by unmistakable signs. Some settlers had been moved to the colony at Capua by the Julian law. A few months before his death, they were building rural houses and demolishing some tombs of great antiquity. They increased their efforts when they uncovered ancient funeral vases with fine workmanship. In one tomb, said to belong to Capis, the founder of Capua, they found a remarkable bronze tablet inscribed with Greek words in archaic characters. The inscription read, Whoever disturbs the bones of Capis, know that a son of Ilium shall be slain by his kinsmen. His death will be avenged at a heavy cost to Italy. And let nobody think this report is a myth or a lie, for the account is confirmed by Cornelius Balbus, who was a close friend of Julius Caesar. Shortly before his death, Caesar received other omens. He had dedicated a herd of horses to the river Rubicon after he crossed it. These animals were let loose without a keeper, but now they stubbornly refused to graze, and they made noises signalling great distress. On that day, a little bird, called the Kingbird, flew into the hall of Pompeii, carrying a sprig of laurel in its beak. It was pursued by various birds from a nearby sacred grove. There, in the great hall, the pursuers tore the king bird to pieces. Also, on the night before his murder, Caesar dreamt that he was flying high above the clouds as he clasped the hand of the god Jupiter. At the same time, his wife, Culpernia, imagined that the pediment of their house collapsed and her husband lay stabbed within her arms. Suddenly, the door to their room flew open, of its own accord. Due to the bad omens and his poor health, Julius Caesar hesitated for a long time. He was unsure whether to stay at home and delay what he had planned to do in the Senate. But he was urged by Decimus Brutus not to disappoint the Senate. A full meeting had been convened, and the attendees had been waiting for him for some time. He therefore left his home near the end of the fifth hour. On the way, someone handed him a note revealing the plot against him, but he put it with other notes which he held in his left hand, intending to read it later. Another time, when he was offering a sacrifice, the soothsayer Spurnia warned Caesar to beware imminent danger. He said the threat would come before the Ides of March were over. On that day, when Caesar oversaw several animal sacrifices, he could not get favourable omens. He therefore defied the portents and laughed at the warnings of the soothsayer Supernia. He called him a false prophet, since the Ides of March had arrived and no harm had come. Spurnia merely replied that the Ides had arrived, but they had not finished. Then Caesar entered the building. As he took his seat, the conspirators gathered about him, as if to pay their respects. Straight away, Tilius Kimber assumed the lead. He came nearer as though to tell Caesar something. When Caesar tried to dismiss him with a gesture, Kimber caught his toga and gripped him by both shoulders. Caesar cried out, What is this? Violence? Then Casca stabbed him from one side, just below the throat. Caesar caught him by the arm and thrust his sharpened stylus into Casca's exposed flesh. But as he tried to leap to his feet, he was stopped by another wound. Then Caesar saw that he was beset on every side by drawn daggers. He threw his robe over his head to blunt the knives. At the same time, he released the fold of his toga with his left hand, so that the heavy fabric fell down to his feet to cover more of his body. He suffered twenty-three wounds, but he never uttered a single sound. He only gave a groan at the first cut, but others have written that when Marcus Brutus rushed at him, he said in Greek, You too 
my offspring. Then all the conspirators fled. Caesar lay lifeless where he had fallen for some time. Finally, three common slaves put him on a litter and carried him home with his one arm hanging down from the screened box. According to the physician Antistasis, none of his wounds had been fatal, except the one delivered into his chest. It seems the conspirators had planned to drag his dead body to the Tiber. They also wanted to confiscate his property and revoke his decrees. It was from fear of the consul, Mark Antony, and Lepidus, the master of cavalry, that prevented them. Suetonius, Life of Julius Caesar, passages 81 to 82, 